On the 3rd of October, 1967, U.S. Air Force Major William Pete Knight did the unthinkable. With the North American X-15 hypersonic aircraft, he traversed Mach 6.7, a speed never before reached by an individual in human history. But what happened next took everyone by surprise. This is the intriguing story of the fastest aircraft in aviation history and its influence on the industry since. From that moment in December 1903 when the Wright brothers built, powered and successfully flew the Wright Flyer, the world began to dream of aircraft that could travel faster, higher and further. It was a moment which changed history forever and continues to influence our day-to-day -day lives in more ways than we can think of. Almost immediately, governments from across the world, and especially in the United States, began to fund programs to develop these aircraft which could allow their citizens to travel the world like never before and open up a market which had never even existed. For the first few years, development was rather slow. But it all really kicked off with the onset of World War I. The United States was heavily involved and greatly invested into the technologies to help its allies thousands of miles away, as well as protect its own borders. In the decades following the war, great progress was made in the aviation industry as the first transatlantic flight ushered in a new dawn for commercial flight and further expanded interest in the industry. World War II pushed this development into second gear and brought about the jet engines, with it the dreams of much faster, quicker than sound flights. And by the time the 50s came around, supersonic flight had become the crave. The race to develop aircraft which could smash the sound barrier was truly on, coinciding with the space age and a race which neither the US nor the Soviets wanted to lose. Agencies such as NASA were formed to develop the required technologies to both develop a supersonic aircraft and win the space race. But the first round went to the Soviets who developed and launched Sputnik 1, the first ever satellite into orbit, in October 1957. The United States wasn't about to lose the race for hypersonic flight though and NASA, who had been trying to develop a supersonic aircraft as far back as 1944, when it was still named NACA, had already even begun to work on a concept aircraft before the mid-50s. Supersonic flight had already been achieved by this time with aircraft such as the Bell X-1 rocket-powered research plane, which broke the sound barrier in October 1947, traveling at a top speed of almost 700 miles per hour. However, despite being a project also developed by NACA and the US Air Force in collaboration with Bell Aircraft, the Bell X-1 aircraft were mostly experimental and couldn't handle the rigors of supersonic flight, and so they were mostly used as test aircraft. Nevertheless, the Bell X-1 was the inspiration for the aircraft which would come to break several world speed records. By the 50s, NACA engineers were able to test out theories which explained the transonic flow over an aircraft Theories which were used on aircraft such as the Convair F-102 and the F-11F Tiger, and bombers such as the B-58 Hustler. In 1954, NACA requested proposals for the airframe of a hypersonic aircraft. A year later, in 1955, it once again requested proposals for the complementary rocket engine. North American Aviation and Reaction Motors were the companies selected in 1956 to provide the respective parts. That was how the record-breaking North American X-15 was born. The North American X-15 was originally designed to be carried on board a mother ship, such as the B-52 Stratofortress Strategic Bomber, and drop launched from under the aircraft's wing at an altitude of over 40,000 feet. The aircraft had dimensions of just over 49 feet in length and 13 feet in height, as well as a wingspan of 22 feet 4 inches. Its empty weight was just over 6 tons, while its gross weight was slightly above 15 tons. Its fuselage was long and cylindrical, with rear fairings and thick wedge fin stabilizers at the dorsal and ventral ends. And some of its parts were made of a heat-resistant nickel alloy, called Inconel X750. The X-15 made use of a ball nose which provided accurate measurements for airspeed and flow angle at supersonic and hypersonic speeds. The aircraft's thick wedge tail made it able to fly steadily during hypersonic flights as it produced a significant amount of base drag at lower speeds. 
This stability was also aided by the side panels, which could be extended from the tail to increase the overall surface area. When it came to the systems, the X-15 went through a number of changes as its roles kept being expanded. Some things were more certain though, and its main rocket engine only operated for a relatively short part of the flight to boost the aircraft to its high speeds and altitudes. The X-15 had to be operated in an environment with too little air for traditional aerodynamic flight control surfaces to be effective, and so it made use of a reaction control system, or RCS. It also made use of a stability augmentation system, or SAS, to help the pilot maintain altitude control. Above 35,000 feet, the X-15 cockpit was pressurized using nitrogen gas, while oxygen for breathing was separately fed to the pilot. The X-15 was initially powered using two reaction motors XLR-11 liquid propellant rocket engines, which were enhanced to provide up to 71 kN of thrust, more than two and a half times that of the XLR engine on the Bell X-1 from a couple of decades earlier. The XLR-11 engine made use of ethyl alcohol and liquid oxygen. Reaction motors eventually upgraded this, however, to the XLR-99, which was propelled by anhydrous ammonia and liquid oxygen as well as hydrogen peroxide and provided up to 250 kilonewtons of thrust. The X-15 had a number of historic flights prior to the one that made William Knight notorious. The first X-15 flight happened on the 8th of June 1959, but was merely an unpowered glide flight. Its first powered flight happened a few months later in September 1959, and what followed was a series of record-breaking spectacles as well as some tragedies. There were 199 X-15 flights in total, and during 13 of them, the pilots flew above 264,000 feet, which essentially actually qualified them to be astronauts, according to the US Armed Forces definition. Two of these flights even exceeded 300,000 feet, with a peak of 354,200 miles. During hypersonic test flights, the X-15 surpassed the Mark VI top speed with Flight 45, hitting Mark 6.04 as early as November 1961. But it would take another two years to just surpass that mark, with Flight 97 hitting Mach 6.06 .06 in December 1963. This improvement was one of the most important landmarks achieved in the build-up to what happened on that fateful day on the 3rd of October 1967. Renowned Air Force pilot William John Knight, also known as Pete, had been a test pilot for the Air Force for nearly a decade. He test flew aircraft, such as the legendary X-20 Dinosaur spacecraft program of the early 60s, which was eventually cancelled. Due to his experience in test flights, Knight was one of 12 pilots selected to test fly the X-15, which made sense, seeing as he had a vast array of experiences on the aircraft, flying it 16 times. This includes a flight June 1967, where his aircraft suffered total electrical failure while traveling at a speed of Mach 4.17 and climbing through 107,000 feet. Thankfully, he was able to calmly glide down to a safe emergency landing. For that remarkable feat of airmanship, he was awarded a Distinguished Flying Cross by the US Armed Forces. However, his actual crowning moment would come just a few months later. On the 3rd of October 1967, Major William Knight, piloting the X-15A2 for Flight 188, was able to set a world aircraft speed record for a manned aircraft as he pushed the aircraft to hit a top speed of Mach 6.7 or 4,520 miles per hour. This is a record that astonishingly still stands today. During the flight, the aircraft's surface temperature exceeded 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, resulting in serious structural problems with the aircraft's fuselage slowly disintegrating. But despite all the problems, Knight was still able to successfully maneuver the X-15 to a perfect landing. On the 15th of November 1967, just over a month after Knight broke the sound barrier, US Air Force test pilot Michael J. Adams was killed during Flight 191 when his X-15-3 entered a hypersonic spin when descending. The aircraft oscillated violently as aerodynamic forces increased after its re-entry leading to ice fragments accumulating on its wing. Then, despite the pilot's best efforts to activate the de-icing system, its airframe broke apart due to dreadful aerodynamic loads, 
at almost 60,000 feet altitude with its wreckage scattered across 50 square miles. Knight, on the other hand, retired as a US Air Force Colonel in 1982, following 32 years of service, over 6,000 hours of flight experience on more than 100 aircraft and numerous awards and honors. But what ended up happening to the X-15 program? Following the November 1967 tragedy, NASA began to reflect on the need for the program. By the end of 1968, the program was permanently cancelled after its historic 200th flight was marred with numerous technical problems and bad weather which led to unbearable delays. The aircraft used up quite a lot of fuel as it could burn up to 15,000 pounds of propellant in just 80 seconds. Plus, its range was also only 240 nautical miles meaning it couldn't get very far, so it wasn't a very practical aircraft. In the end, only three X-15s were ever built, and they flew 199 test flights in total, the last being in October 1968. Of the three, two survived, and they are currently on display at museums in the United States, alongside a few mock-ups. The aircraft's influence still lives on till this day, and there are some aspects of the aviation industry that have been furthered by its development. The X-15 may have been a test aircraft, but in its relatively short lifespan, it was used to gather critical flight data that made human spaceflight and future hypersonic aircraft possible. It allowed engineers and scientists to be able to conduct research that inevitably helped elevate aviation to a new level. The X-15 played an important role in early human space exploration and its design as well as its achievements paved the way for the modern high-speed aircraft and spacecraft. It also helped in the development of future reusable launch vehicles by pioneering energy management techniques required for aircraft moving at the speeds of rockets. It helped advance navigation systems and thermal protection equipment. As it turns out, famous astronaut Neil Armstrong was a test pilot on the X-15 and made his first flight on the aircraft on the 30th of November 1960. The X-15 aircraft may no longer grace our skies to wow the imaginations of aviation enthusiasts, but it was a showcase of human ingenuity and the pursuit of knowledge. Thanks to brave pilots like Knight, those daring flights helped expand our understanding of not just hypersonic flights, but flights in general, and propelled us closer to space travel. Its legacy will continue to live on as a testament to man's uncanny attraction to exploration as well as showcasing the endless possibilities of aviation technology. What do you think about the legendary plane and Knight's famous accomplishment? Please let us know in the comments below. Until next time, take care.